wondering what you got for me Egyptian kind of sad to be already on me I'm wondering what you got for me Egyptian kind of sad to be already on me Fauban, it's Freddy. A big heartfelt Jinkuya Bardzo to the tens of viewers that have kept us in the top 10 YouTube sports card investing shows. Hosted by a Polish American girl dad. I hope you enjoyed our last episode of King Kong Cards, where I analyzed which Steph Curry rookie is grossly undervalued. Today we're taking a little detour from Valueville and heading straight for Shenanigans Town. I swear to God, I'll pistol whip the next guy that says shenanigans. <clears throat> hey, Farva, what's the name of that restaurant you like with all the goofy shit on the walls and the mozzarella sticks? You mean shenanigans? No! Shall we see what hobby nonsense lurks at the next exit? Yes, we shall. I shouldn't care. I should keep my damn mouth shut and keep taking advantage of these arbitrage opportunities. I should let the PSA groupies keep paying their PSA groupie tax. But I'm a man of the people. And I can't, nay, I shan't stay silent any longer. Ladies and gentlemen, it makes absolutely no sense that a PSA 10 is selling for a premium over a BGS 9.5 or SGC 10 Mint. Look at the example of the 2017 Prism Patrick Mahomes rookie. Currently, a PSA Gem Mint 10 is selling for $2,900 almost double the cost of a BGS 9.5 gem mint. Make no sense, Why are investors paying almost double for a PSA gem mint 10 Patrick Mahomes rookie? Because they like the aesthetics of one cheap plastic holder over another cheap plastic holder. And they like seeing the number 10 instead of 9.5. I don't know about you, but I enjoy twofers. So when they're buying a PSA Gem Mint 10 for almost double the cost of the same or similar card, they're essentially lighting fire to a second Patrick Mahomes Prism Rookie that they could own. Does that make any sense? Should we do something to even the pricing of cards that are in similar grades from the three major companies? Why hell yeah! I'm here to stop the madness and democratize card pricing. How? If you remember back in Psych 101, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the five tier pyramid of human needs with the most desired needs on top, I've adapted it and created Maslow's hierarchy of modern sports card grading. It's your easy, handy dandy reference tool for your sports card investing journey. It breaks down all of the similar grades into tiers so that when you're on eBay or at your local card shop, you can see which card from which company is a similar grade. Almost forgot. We should go over five general ground rules and principles to cover our chat. One, this only applies to modern sports cards from 1981 to today. Two, as you can probably tell, I'm grading company agnostic as long as the cards are graded by one of the big three. 
BGS, SGC, and PSA. Don't buy cards that are graded from anybody else. Number three, I'm only taking into account the actual condition and grade of the card. I don't care about the cheap plastic holders, the OCD nature of certain collectors that need all of their cards in the same holder, and I'm not taking into account any set registry components. Look, if you want to flex your collection, jump on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok like the rest of us. Number four, grading is inherently subjective and riddled with human error. There is no objective proof that any grading company is better than the others. There are examples from all three companies undergrading and overgrading cards. If you're into centering, you might want to take another look at that PSA 10 gem mint. But if you're a corner guy or girl, you might want to take a little closer look at that BGS 9.5. Grading is simply an opinion and not a card's life sentence. And finally, number five. These are generalizations meant to be used as a guideline. Pricing can vary greatly from tier to tier and depending on the card's popularity, scarcity, and condition sensitivity. Now that we have that out of the way, let's go back to the pretty diagram. Sitting all alone at the top of the graded food chain is the mythical beast, the BGS Black Label 10. I don't own any. I wish I did. But as you guessed it, they're super duper pricey. There's a ring. Holy is that real? Yeah. They say three years salary. Oh. On the next tier, we have the BGS 10 Pristine, the SGC 10 Pristine, and the top percentile of PSA Gem Mint 10s. The only issue for PSA Gem Mint 10s, though, is because they don't offer half grades or subgrades, it is almost impossible, while the card is in a slab, to detect which PSA Gem Mint 10s qualify for this tier or drop down into our Gem Mint tier, which includes the BGS 9.5 Gem Mint, the SGC 10 Mint, and the rest of the PSA Gem Mint 10s. Below the Gem tier sits the SGC Mint Plus, the highest grade BGS 9 mints, those are cards with two 9.5 subgrades and two 9 subgrades, and the highest caliber PSA 9 mints. Those would be ones that just were on the borderline of becoming a PSA Gem Mint 10. Again though, without subgrades and half grades, it's very difficult to ascertain which PSA cards would actually qualify as a borderline gem mint 10 and would actually fall into this higher mint category. Or get pushed down into the final category that we'll discuss on the Maslow's hierarchy of modern card grading, the mint level. That is BGS 9 mint, SGC 9 mint, and PSA 9 mint. I don't recommend buying any modern cards that are below this level unless they are rare parallel and variations or condition sensitive like the 93 SB Derek Jeter. I'd love to hear your comments on Maslow's hierarchy of modern sports card grading. Please leave your comments below and hopefully we'll see cards in similar tiers, selling for similar prices soon. And if not, 
buy a whole bunch of high grade BGS 9.5 and SGC 10 mints and cross them over to PSA and make a boatload of money. As always, I'm Freddy and you're welcome.